The January 6th committee is gearing up for the next hearing tonight in prime time, and we're expected to learn new details of what uh, then President Donald Trump was doing and not doing during the 187 minutes the Capitol itself was under attack. The committee is also calling on two former Trump officials. They will be the live witnesses tonight. They were with Donald Trump during that attack. They resigned right after it. Our team coverage continues now. Uh, let's start with ABC News White House correspondent Mary Alice Parks. Uh, in about an hour, I guess now, uh, the committee with, uh, will convene for tonight's hearing, which is focusing on what they call, what the committee is calling, Trump's, quote, grave dereliction of duty on January 6th. So how is this going to unfold, do you think, regarding Trump and what was going on in, uh, on Capitol Hill? Yeah, Terry, it's no coincidence that the committee today is going to be, and the hearing today is going to be led by two members of Congress who both served in uniform, who are both military members themselves, Adam Kinzinger and Elaine Luria, a Democrat and a Republican. And the committee wants to draw that comparison. They want to be able to say that there is a way to defend this country. There's an appropriate way for a commander in chief to support and defend this country. And then there's not. Like you said, they plan to show that the president, they're going to make an argument that the the president uh, was was there was was not there on the job. It was an absolute dereliction of duty. They want to be able to go minute by minute uh, and show what he was doing or not doing, and the kind of advice that he was getting. What was coming into him? What was he being asked to do? Was he being asked to put out statements to encourage supporters to go home, to call the Pentagon, and did he ignore that advice? Uh, thank you, Mary Alice. And part of our team tonight, former Congresswoman Barbara Comstock, Republican of Virginia. And, and Barbara, we're going to hear from these two former White House staffers. Both of them quit right after uh, the attack on the Capitol. And this is of a piece, right? Most of the witnesses, the most damning witnesses in particular, almost all of them, have been not liberal Democrats, not critics of the president, but people who served him, served the country in his White House. What are you expecting from them? Well, uh, Matthew Pottinger was a, you know, a military person and a national security person. This is somebody who worked on North Korea issues and was close to the president, so certainly can't be discredited in Trump world. And he was appalled that with this, you know, very dangerous sort of domestic terrorism situation that Donald Trump was doing nothing, that was sitting there watching TV. And from the accounts, certainly the account in Jonathan Carl's book saying that he ran and asked, you know, what's being done, Mark Meadows said, oh, yeah, we've already called the National Guard, which apparently we know from Mark Milley's testimony was not done. So I guess Mark Meadows was lying to um, him so that nothing would be done because he knew Donald Trump didn't want anything done. So I think this whole 187 minutes is going to be shown to be in itself criminal intent, because the 187 minutes was 187 minutes when Donald Trump was trying to get things stopped, trying to stop Congress from doing his job, trying to stop um, Mike Pence from doing his job, and trying to you know, get Mike Pence and Congress to change their mind. And we're still trying to get the mob to get them to either change their mind or to be able to get the mob to just stop the whole thing altogether. And, and that is, uh, brings us to a law professor at American University, Kimber Kimberly Whaley. And, and Kimberly, that question of, that looms over these hearings, which are crucially important in their own way, but people are wondering, given the evidence, is it right for the Attorney General of the United States, Merrick Garland, to put, uh, to put forth criminal charges against former President Trump? Uh, what do you think of, of, of that question, and in particular, of what these 187 minutes of what the committee is alleging is dereliction of duty would do, not as a political matter, but in a court of law in a criminal case? Well, I understand the argument that it's just um, uncomfortable to see potentially a, a former president in an orange jumpsuit and that it could create a problem in future administrations, sort of this ping-ponging of indicting presidents. But DOJ is not going to indict without sufficient evidence. So I'm not so concerned about that. I, I did a piece in Politico a few weeks ago about how, honestly, if, if this doesn't happen, if there's not an indictment 
of President Trump, that is a green light for crime sprees in the White House for future presidents, because pretty much every other guardrail to protect the American people against abuses of power, massive power in the presidency have, have gone. As far as the, uh, the question of the dereliction of duty, I agree. It does go to knowledge and intent for these other crimes, but there is no separate crime for dereliction of duty. It, it might be evidence in, in a different charge. And uh, former Senator uh, Heidi Heitkamp, Democrat of North, Carol North Dakota, uh, let me just ask you, what, what, what do you make of that issue, of, of, try of putting the president on trial and what these hearings have done to advance that or to, or to show how it might not be possible? Well, we can be informed by Watergate. Um, it didn't work for Gerald Ford to say it's time for healing. Um, we're just going to go ahead and pardon the president and move on. The public needed to know, and they needed to see justice carried out. Now, I think Merritt Garland is more than capable of judging whether there is an indictable offense here, whether he has evidence that he can prove beyond a reasonable doubt, which to me is critically important, that, that this not be a situation where there's an indictment without a, a very, very strong possibility of a conviction. Um, I don't think this is the president who's going to go away uh, easily. Um, the, the thing that I want to say about the hearings, though, Terry, is, you know, people say, well, they've testified against Trump. No, they've testified as to the truth of what was happening on those days and what Donald Trump was doing. The condemnation is not in the testimony, it's in the facts. And uh, the, this is a president who walked away from his responsibilities. That is a great point uh, about these witnesses. Thanks to Heidi, to all. Uh, you're a great team. I know you'll be with us uh, throughout this evening. I'm Terry Moran. Thanks very much for joining us. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.